Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at a filter that I've been asked about more than any other. This one is the Eheim Professional 4 Plus 600 and I think there's been some media left in it as well so we're going to get this out of the box, open it up Take a look, I'll explain how it works, and then we'll see what we can do, if anything, to make it more efficient. Right, so we've got our in pipe here, which goes down here, into our pre-filter tray, which has got a coarse foam in it. And I'll just take a second to explain this. Basically, the water comes in, into the bottom of here, it then swills around in here, all the heavy muck settles out in here, gets caught in the foam, water rises up, goes down through here, all the way down to the bottom of the canister before rising back up and out of the center of here, which has got a little flappy valve. And this particular part fits on here and that's where our pump is. So our pump draws the water out, spits it back to the tank. There is an extra part here which is found in the plus versions of these filters and that allows the flow to be altered but I'll explain that once I've actually set it up. So that's our pre-filter tray. And then we've got one two Three, four main trays. And unfortunately, unlike a lot of the older Eheim filters, we don't have space in the bottom of here to put any rings as a primary settlement. But we do have that pre-filter, which should act as the primary settlement. So we'll get that out of the way and have a look at the trays. So from bottom to top, water rises up through this stuff, which is a plastic mech media. That's meant to trap muck and also support a bit of bacteria. But unfortunately, it's plastic, plastic, static. It's just, it's hopeless, basically. I don't know what to say about it, it's bloody useless. That is the same in the second one up. Then we've got a void that would normally be filled with biological media. And the last one, is filled with biological media. Actually, as far as filter media goes, it's pretty good. It packs in nice and tight, so you can get a hell of a lot of surface area in there. It's basically just a sintered glass. It's very similar to our bio gravel. It's not quite as porous, but it's getting there. So that's actually a pretty good media. And then we've got the obligatory fine pad on the top. As you know, that's not where it needs to be, but we can change that. And before we go on to upgrade this particular filter, I may as well point out what this hole is here for. That is to let water through. So if you notice that the return flow back to your tank is slowing down, you can actually turn this. And what that does, it allows a large proportion of water just to bypass this fine pad and come straight up here and out of this part of our pre-filter tray. So it just pours the water all over here. It ends up going through here, getting sucked out by the pump. So it, it's a bypass function. It's not as well made as the Pro 2 series, as far as I'm concerned. There's a lot that could smash off. They do fit together, but you have to be very careful. If you're a bit rough, you're easily gonna smash these little fittings off. And I'm not, I'm actually not a fan of the, the fiddliness of it. You know, all these little fittings, I mean, you, you'd slip when you're carrying one of these, you drop it, smash, that's gone, you know.
Pro 3 has this similar problem as well from as far as I can remember. If every one of the series of Eheim filters has got more fiddly and ultimately less useful, you know? I'll explain. Everything is just more fragile than it was years ago. There's so much scope for the things not fitting together properly, for the fitting smashing off. Um, and really the extender function is good if you're not physically capable of getting to your filter very regularly. You can extend it that little bit longer. Um, but really, if the filter was set up properly in the first place, that function just would never ever be used. You wouldn't need to use that function. This is frustrating. They do size their filters well, as long as you look at their website and see the figure that says for aquariums of about, not the figure that says for aquariums up to. Um, they used to make filters really, really well. Now they just make them overly technical and I'm not a fan of them. I, can't. I would love to be excited about this because I know there's so many fanboys out there who are excited about this and they're gonna really defend this particular range of filters to the hilt, but I just can't do that. You know, I've got no allegiances to any company or any particular type of filter. I just want something to be good that I know is gonna last for many, many years. This is a, this is a step backwards. I'm, I'm going to stop going on about it now, though, because people are just going to think I'm on a rant. And I don't like rant videos because generally they have no sort of weight to them whatsoever. My concerns with this, however, are 100% genuine. Right, that is how our filter is set up. So we've got the pre-filter in the top that water comes into, goes down the side of here, rises up through the trays. So, in the bottom tray, remember, we've got our plastic mech media. Next tray up, we've got more mech, and that's far too much mech. Then we've got nothing. That would normally be filled with biological media. And then in the top one, we've got some good biological media, and we've got a fine pad. So that's how it is set up. That's how it's recommended to be set up. Um, that's not the most efficient way to set it up though. I will now show you what is the most efficient way to set it up, in my opinion. You can change it if you want. Let's go. So first job is to get rid of all of this plastic mech media. Right, that is all of our mech pro gone from the filter. We may as well chuck the pad away, it has been used. And we're going to tip this Substrat Pro out as well. It's okay, certainly better than ceramic rings, but we can do better. Right, so we're going to leave the pre-filter tray exactly as it is. Nothing really we can do to that, so that one is going to be left with the Eheim blue pad in there. It's actually the only thing that we're going to be keeping from this setup. Bottom tray, coarse, medium, fine pads. The coarse and the medium pads are just pond foams. The bumpy side, down, so you've got maximum contact surface area. And the fine pad is just a cheap, fine pad that you buy for pond filters. Don't waste money on ones that are marketed for aquariums because they will be twice the price. All that goes in the bottom tray. That will ensure that all the muck in the filter, apart from what is in the pre-filter, will be held in the bottom third of the filter. It won't be in amongst all your filter media, clogging it up and making it inefficient. It'll be held below this in here, exactly where you want it. And on top of there, we've got three media trays left. So we're gonna fill them all with biological media to combat the ammonia 
nitrite and nitrate in your tank because we're going to be using the Biohome Ultimate. I'll fill all the trays and then I'll let you know exactly how much we can get in each tray. Okay. That fits on there well. Another thing about these trays though is they can just drop inside each other like that. That's the, um, I moves had too much coffee today. I do apologise, especially if anybody from Eheim's watching. But um, this is riling me. This is. Ah, I like things to be right, you know? This isn't right. It's not right. It's close, but it's not right. Here's another catchphrase. It's not sitting on there properly. a little bit better. I'm just going to bring the camera in to show you one of the problems, just one of the problems with these trays. Okay, so in our pre-filter tray we've got a solid piece here and that creates a tube which goes all the way down and that's where our water goes after it's milled around in here. All the way down there to the bottom rises up through the trays. So we'll take this off And you'll notice that next one, instead of it being solid, it's actually three thin pieces of plastic. And they can get bent out of shape. One of them actually arrived bent out of shape. I had to bend it back to get these to sit together properly. They are going to get snapped off very, very easily. I don't know whether you can see, but there's already some plastic fatigue there. When this arrived, that was actually like that. On the outside so as these were pressed down that is weakened eventually that was going to get snapped off and because these don't lock together all the way you lose that the water is going to come down here pee out the side and because the trays don't fit together properly you're going to get bypass that is a shocking shocking design problem from a German manufacturer and I haven't even mentioned the clasps they are weaker than I have seen on any other Eheim filter. I don't know what, I kind of think what they were thinking of. I really don't know. The German companies pride themselves on design and quality of construction and efficiency. And this is, this flies in the face of all of that. Another German manufacturer, which is Tetra, also make canister filters. When they came out initially, I wasn't very pleased with them. The quality of construction wasn't too good. However, successive models have got better construction. And they're, better, they're just better all round. They're certainly better all round than this generation of Eheim filters. So, oh, man. I didn't get this riled up when I took a look at the Boyu EF25, which was a god-awful filter. That's made in China. It's... Ugh. The fittings were better than they were on here. It was an awful filter, but I didn't expect anything from it. I expected... I didn't expect perfection. I just expected something that at the very least bloody fit together properly. Ah! Anyway, let's get back to it. Each tray has got 1.2 kilos of Biohome Ultimate in. So that's a total of 3.6 kilos, which is approximately seven pounds or thereabouts. Maybe seven and a half pounds for you guys in the US. That's not too bad, but I don't know. I'm just struggling to find anything positive. And I don't wanna I don't wanna be negative. I don't want to just say negative things about this. But this is the one I just cannot recommend at all. I mean, I'm really grateful for Chat who sent me this for sending me it because I get asked about it all the time. But it's not a good filter. It's not at all. And before any fanboys say anything, I'm not being paid by any filter manufacturer to big up or run down anybody's filters. I'm looking at these objectively and I'm disappointed.
Right, I'm going to put all the trays back in, hopefully not smash any when they go in, and we'll talk a few facts and figures about this filter. that one for the top that's the one that's bent out it doesn't fit together properly now that one looks okay uh, that one's been bent out but it's sitting a little bit better so I'll put that one in now luckily you can see through the side of this so that is a positive you can check if the trays are sitting together properly that one is good Yeah, that one's gone together good. And that one's in good as well. So it's just this one. Oh, come on, come on. Right, I've stuck that side in first. That's where our problem is. I'm just going to try and drop both of these trays in together. And hopefully hit the mark. Oh, man. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, come on, man. How we... <laughs> at the risk of snapping that little bit off I've managed to bend it in and get everything fitting together perfectly but this is the edited version you're watching I've cut out so many swear words if this was my own filter I would have smashed it I literally would have taken it outside and had a gripping mel and smashed it to pieces that might sound like blasphemy for something so expensive but that's just how I feel quickly get it back before it files the bits okay so that in a nutshell is the Eheim Professional 4 600 a huge disappointment and I wouldn't recommend this over any of the filters that I've taken a look at so far except for that Boyu EF 25 which was an absolute abomination if you're gonna look for an Eheim See if you can get an Eheim Pro 2 series or one of the many copies that are out there. Probably the nearest one to the Pro 2 would be the Aquas range from Aqua 1. They are excellent, they hold a lot of media, they're well made. I think I've done one of those in a previous video, it was a 1250. An excellent filter, infinitely better than that and probably less than half the price as well. So that is the one I would recommend over this in a heartbeat. I'll put the link to that in the video description. That is a good filter, this is not. I'm gonna get this packaged up, send back the chat. Thanks very much again, chat, for sending me this. I know I've been horrendously negative with this particular filter, but I can only say what I see. And that's, um, facts and figures, facts and figures. God, facts and figures, right. Okay, so the flow rate on this, 1250 litres per hour, which is roughly 329 US gallons per hour. It's recommended for tanks between 240 litres to 600 litres, 
which is roughly 63 US gallons to 158 US gallons. And on the Eheim website, it does say for aquariums of about 240 litres. So that would, that would be a realistic figure for this. That 240 litres or 48 US gallons is a normally stocked tropical community tank. 600 litres, yeah, it's going to keep a, a very, very lightly stocked 600 litre fully planted tank perfect. But that's not what most people have. Most people have a canny few fish in, you know. So roughly 240 litres. But if it's upgraded like this with 3.6 kilograms of Biohome Ultimate, that'll make it suitable for nearer 350. So it kind of bumps it up by about 100 litres. Remember for a normally stocked tank, we generally use one kilo per 100 litres to deliver that full cycle, which is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and low nitrate. And for a heavily stocked tank, you could halve that from 350 litres all the way down to 175 litres, which is about 33 US gallons. So that would be for a heavily stocked tank to achieve a full cycle. I don't really know what more to say about this. I've been pretty much negative from start to finish. As soon as I got that top off, I didn't like what I saw. So again, apologies to Eheim. Apologies to anybody that's got one of these. I know there'll be loads of fanboys writing in the comments section that it's the best thing ever, but it just isn't, unfortunately. And that disappoints me. So, if you found this video useful for one reason or another, please hit the thumbs up. If you're a fanboy, give it a thumbs down. <laughs> Share it wherever you want. I'm sure some people would like to be able to see all these problems that are evident in this particular range of filters. So share it wherever you can, please. Um, I really, I don't, it sounds awful, but I don't want people to buy this because they are gonna experience those stupid niggling little problems with it. And that is unforgivable. It really is. Um, Anyhow, hopefully the next episode will feature a good filter because it cannot get much worse unless it's another boy you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.